Hey guys, Zeke here. In today's video, we're going to do a step-by-step -step walkthrough on the best settings for Magic Lantern Raw on the Canon EOS M. Let's go check it out. Alright, so the first thing that you need to get started with Magic Lantern Raw on the Camus M is an SD card. My recommendation is the SanDisk Extreme Pro. This is a 64 gig, I'd recommend 64, 128 or even 512 gig, which is my main card. These cards have really good speed for the various types of recordings that you need. Uh, they're reliable and they're pretty much better than the other ones that I've tested out in the field. Alright, so in this video, I'm pretty much going to go through each individual settings or different modes on the Canon EOS M. Also, just a quick note that I'm going to leave my build in the description below, so you can go ahead and download that, and then you have pretty much all the settings that I use on my Canon EOS M. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to explain through each individual feature, each different mode, and just explain how to get the best performance out of this camera. So once you download the build, just extract the folder, and you should see three files inside. Copy them onto the SD card, after you've done that, just update the firmware in camera and then Magic Lantern should successfully install. So once you've installed Magic Lantern RAW on the Canon EOS M, what you can now see is a range of different presets that you can choose from. For example, 1080 mode, uh, 5K anamorphic, 2.5K RAW, all these different presets you can assign to different custom modes. So for example, custom mode 1, I can set that to the 1080 mode. For custom mode 2, I can set that to 2.5K or 2.8K. So for each custom mode that you select, you're going to have to assign your own presets to that individual custom mode. If you're looking for a normal raw continuous mode that resembles full HD 1080p, uh, then I can highly recommend the 1080 mode and the 5K FRTP mode, which stands for for real time preview. And the reason why it's called that is because previously it had an anamorphic stretch in the live view and it was just really hard to see what you're really framing. So for real time preview allows you to see exactly what you're getting in your footage. In the 1080 mode, you have a 1.6 times crop. It's continuous raw at 10 or 14 bit. And the 5K anamorphic mode, you can shoot 10 bit raw, and that's also continuous. Now in the 5K raw mode, it's not really 5K resolution. Uh, what it is, is a particular resolution that sort of upscales into a large resolution, and the quality is around a full HD image. But the good thing about that mode is that it doesn't have the aliasing and artifacts that you get with the 1080 mode. So if you're looking for a mode that has an absence of aliasing or a greatly reduced artifacts, then the 5K FRTP mode is my choice, and that's something that we'll look at later on in this video. All right, and testing the 5K anamorphic FRTP mode, which stands for for real time preview. And this is what it looks like. I'm shooting with the Fotgar A50 monitor. I can see the framing and it's absolutely perfect. So what you see in this mode in the live view is exactly what you're gonna get in post. Now the problem that some people face with that mode is that once you export it to a DNG file from MLV app, uh, you have to stretch it back in post. So if you place the files into DaVinci Resolve, you'll see that it's vertically stretched and we want to stretch that out horizontally. So to fix it in DaVinci Resolve, all you have to do is go into your timeline, highlight the clips that you need, and then go into the inspector tab. And then towards the bottom, you'll see scaling option. Select that one and then select stretch. Once you've done that, you'll see that your footage goes back to normal and it's that easy. Okay guys, so right now we're gonna do a step-by-step -step tutorial on the Canon EOS M, and we're gonna look at the different modes that I recommend and how to set them up for video. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right guys, so here I have the Canon EOS M, and I've just installed Magic Lantern Raw, the latest version. This is the 2020 October the 5th build. So I'm gonna go ahead, I've restarted everything, everything started from scratch, and we're gonna go ahead and set our different modes. So let's get into it. All right, so straight away you see the white balance. I'm gonna go ahead and fix that to around 5400 Kelvin, just as a good base start. And then over here on the first tab, you got your ISO, shutter, aperture, and your picture style. The picture style doesn't really matter much for raw video, only for like H.264 and photos. And we go ahead to the movie tab. So the first thing that is set is your presets, which is the HD 1080p mode. And as you can see, you have a whole range of different modes and presets that you can select. So for the first one, we're gonna do HD 1080. This is just for your normal standard raw mode. All right, so before you do anything in your preset, just make sure you select custom mode one. Once you've selected custom mode one, for the 1080 mode, we can pretty much set whatever we need to set, but just make sure you set custom mode one first. And then you can see your aspect ratio is 2.39 to one. We don't really want that, so we're gonna set that to off. Bit depth, you can select 10 or 12 bit. 
I just keep that off. If you leave it off, it equals 14 bit. And if you're not getting enough record time in any of the different modes, then just enable 10 bit, which will allow for more record time. If you want to do 25 FPS, you can just enable set 25. And obviously you have white balance here, shutter lock and then shutter fine tuning. So if you don't want to bump your shutter by accident, you can see that if you accidentally change the shutter, it will go back to the shutter that you set. So I'll leave that on and then shutter fine tuning. So you can adjust 1 50th of the shutter to around 1 48th if you need it. I just pretty much keep it at 1 50th for now. Shutter range, this just allows you to get past 1 33rd of the shutter to around, you know, 1 20th or 1 24th. I tend to keep that off. Sound recording, audio delay, leave that at zero. Sample rate, 48 kilohertz, and we'll leave that there. In the customized buttons, you have times three crop toggle. So if you press the set button, so if you press the set button, it's gonna zoom in by times three. This is good to capture birds and wildlife if you wanna have that extra crop. If you don't, just don't press set. For focus age, you can enable that to default mode. So if you half press the shutter, it's gonna zoom in by 10 times. I don't really need that, so I just leave that to off. Gain, this is very important. So with the info switch, you can press the info button and that will switch between ISO and aperture. So let's go ahead and try that. Press the info button, aperture. So if I press these buttons, I can change the aperture. If I wanna change the ISO, press info and now it says ISO. So I can bump up the ISO like that and then go back down. So info, you have aperture and ISO. If you wanna change that to just one, then go ahead and select aperture only or just ISO. For me, I keep it at aperture only. Drop down list, this is what it means. If you tap the screen, you have a range of different presets you can access on the go. Info selectable, select one. And then what that does is it just shows you your framing, your correct framing, what you're gonna get in post. So I've obviously set a different aspect ratio and I can fix that in just a second. SD overclock. So if you're shooting high resolution like 2.5K or 2.8K, you can enable 240 megahertz, uh, which will allow you to shoot longer in the high resolution modes. So this is SD overclocking your SD card. It's improving the performance. Um, it depends on what card you have. The faster card you have, the better performance. For just normal stuff, just leave it at 192 megahertz. And then up here, so we've got presets set to 1080. Raw mode, we want to select aspect ratio. We want 16 by nine and that's just gonna give us standard video. And that's the maximum resolution you'll get, 1736 by 976. You can also change aspect ratio from here. It doesn't really matter. This is just like a quick uh, way of doing it, I guess. So you don't really need to enable it here if you've already enabled it in raw video. This, however, is important for the other modes and we'll get into that. All right, in the overlay tabs, you have zebras, a focus peak, magic zoom. All these things need to be set. So for zebras, you definitely want that on and that will help you expose your footage. So Keep that to 100%. And then you have magic zoom, which I don't use. Crop marks. These if you want to, you know, have some crop marks to guide your shooting if you're going to have an aspect ratio in post. I'll leave that off unless I need it. And you have false color, which definitely helps. So that's what it looks like. And the dark blue areas are where the shadows are being crushed. And the orange and yellow are towards the highlight peaking. Red means the highlight is peaking and black means the highlights are absolutely clipped and you can't recover them in post. What you want is gray and green. They're your safe colors for good exposure. So I'm gonna leave that off for now. Histogram, you wanna set that to linear. Your histogram is gonna tell you that you've overexposed and it shows here. You can see the zebras, the highlights are clipping as well as over here. So you can either fix that or leave that. It's completely up to you. Also, you have your settings here to confirm. You got 14 bit, you got 1080 HD, and 21 mil f2.2. You got your shutter, ISO, white balance, and I'm in manual focus. So all the information is down here if you need to refer to it. And over here, I've got 23.98 frames per second. You don't want 30 frames per second because it's going to have pink frames, and you'll run into some issues. In the display tab, allow live view digit peaking. This is pretty much like focus peaking, but without the colors. So just enable that slightly sharper. And that's pretty much it for 10D mode. Let's go ahead and check out the next mode, which is the 5K FRTP. So select custom mode two, restart your camera. All right, so hold the trash can button to access the menu. And you can see that I'm now in custom mode two. And from here, I pretty much have to set everything again according to a different preset. So custom mode one is 1080 and custom mode two, I wanna set 5k anamorphic frtp you can see that this is 5k anamorphic 
FLV. We want to go down here to the FRTP one, click set, and then just tap menu a few times just for it to reset the register. All right, so here we are in this mode and I'm going to show you how to get a normal looking live view. So we can see that ratio has been set to 2.39. We want 16 by nine, so click set for that. Press menu for it to reset. And then there you go. This is the 16 by nine 5K FRTP mode. And let's go ahead and fix our settings. So white balance, we want 5400. So you can see that every time you enable a new preset, you've got to set all these settings again yourself. So if you go down to customize buttons, you can see that you need to set all these again. So just select the ones that you need. Gain, I want an aperture only. Drop down list, that's fine. If I enable info selectable to info one, let's see what happens. So this is my framing in live view. If I press info, you can see it's the exact framing. So what we see in live view is what we're gonna get in post. So, so this mode is absolutely fantastic. There is a reduction of aliasing and artifacts. Uh, I'd highly recommend this over the 1080 mode. This is the raw resolution that we're getting and you can shoot 2.35 to one aspect ratio. I tend to leave it at 16 by nine. So that's pretty much it. Custom mode two has been set for 5K anamorphic FRTP and we'd go ahead and select custom mode three and then restart. All right, so the preset, we're gonna shoot 2.5K raw. Um, you can see down here that we have 2.5K FRTP. So this is a fixed live view. What you see is what you get. You can enable this, but I'll show you what it's all about. So you can see you get a white box here, but you get the correct preview. So in the 2.5K mode, you have around a three times crop. And you can see that with a 30 mil lens, this is what the 3K crop looks like. If you want to hide this white line, what you can do is go into the overlay tab, select crop marks, and then if you're shooting 16 by nine, enable that. If you're shooting two to one, 2.35 to one, just enable these and that will pretty much hide the white line. So there you go. So you can just focus on that box, which is your real time framing. Now, if you don't want that box, if you just want to crop, go ahead and select this 2.5K mode. So click set, press menu a few times just to register it. And then what you see, but look how cropped that is. It's super cropped, you need to press info. And then you'll see the real time framing. My preference is the 2.5K, not the FRTP, but everyone has their own choice. So I'm gonna select 2.5K and then press menu just to reset that and then hold the trash can and I can shoot 16 by nine with full 2.5K raw. With the FRTP, you only get 2.35 to one. And here I get 16 by nine. This is not continuous. If you want continuous 16 by nine, 2.5K, just enable 16 by nine here and it will adjust the resolution for you to get continuous raw. Or you can do 2.35 or 2.39 to one. I'll leave that off and keep it at 16 by nine. And then once you've set your mode down here, you can go again to sound recording, customize buttons and change these different things like gain, aperture only, drop down list, info selectable. So with the info button, I can check my framing. And then overlays, you have to select your zebras again. So each time you select a different mode, you have to change these settings again. But once all of these have been set in the different custom modes, uh, you don't have to change them ever again. Now to get much better raw recording performance, what you need is to enable it bit depth. 10 bit, leave that at 10 bit and you'll get much better recording time than if that's set to off. So every time you're recording high resolution, uh, just enable bit depth to 10 bit. So that's what you have to do in each mode that you set. So for custom mode one, we have 1080, custom mode two, 5K anamorphic FRTP. Custom mode three, we have it set to 2.5K. Let's go ahead and do custom mode four and I'm gonna set that to 2.8K rule. All right, so here we are in custom mode four and you can see that we have to set all these again because it's a fresh install. I'll have all these settings in my description below, so no need to set these, I'll have them all done. What we need to look at is how to set these modes for better recording performance. So let's go ahead and enable 2.8K raw down over here. Press menu. And there you have it, it's all set. So hold the trash can button. Raw video at 2800 by 1170. This is set at ratio 2.39 to one, and we want to set that 2.35 to one. Press menu, and there you go. Now if you do 16 by nine, you're not gonna get much recording time. So, so bit depth, set that to 10 bit. We want more recording time, and then white balance. So I'll just leave that at 5400. Press menu. Now this is what it looks like in your live view. What you're actually recording. Now this is what it looks like in your live view. It's quite cropped, but 
what you're really recording is much wider. So if you hold the trash can button, go down to customize buttons, and for info selectable, select info one. Now you can see my fingers there, press the info button, and you can see a wider field of view. This is what you're really recording. And it's pretty much showing the raw frames that you've captured. So press info. So info is to check framing and keep real time live view just to record. And then again, select your overlays that you want, like false color, histogram, and then your exposure menu. In the display tab, enable LV digit peaking, and then you're pretty much good to go. For shutter fine tuning, let's set this mode to 1 48th of the shutter. So you can see down here that your shutter speed is changing from 1 50th to a fine tuned 1 48th. So you want that to around 992, which is the closest to 1 48th. And then over here, you can see that it's a 180 degree shutter angle. And then it'll also show up down here, 1 48th. So these are my custom modes so far. What I'm gonna do in post is I'm gonna rename these for you so you guys can see it more clearly. To rename it, all you do is go into the SD card, the settings folder, and then just rename custom mode one to 1080, custom mode two to 2.5K. I'll do this in post. So custom mode five, let's go ahead and set that and it says to restart. All right, so for custom mode five, I like to set that to the 4K preset. And what this is, is it's not really 4K, 24 frames per second. Uh, it's 4K with a really low frame rate. So it's good for like, you know, time lapse and stuff like that or something really artistic. So for that, I like to set it to 2.35 to one and then press menu. Hold the trash can and you can see that we have a raw resolution of 4040 by 1718 and the aspect ratio is 2.35 to one. So let's go ahead and resemble that here. So this one here is like an override aspect ratio. And then down here, you can see that our frame per second is eight FPS. So again, this is good for time-lapse. To enable time-lapse on presets, tap it, and then select 4K time-lapse. And then these are your intervals. So you can select one interval, three, four. Uh, it's completely up to you. I like to leave it at about five. So once you've done that, press the menu button. And then if you press info, you can see exactly what you're getting with this 4K time-lapse mode. Now over here, you can see that our frames per second is around three, and we want to reflect that with our shutter, but the problem is we can't go below 1 33rd. So to go below that, what you need to enable is shutter range. Select full range and then go back. Then you can see that you can adjust it to a lower shutter. For example, three frames per second would equal around six, one sixth of the shutter. All right, so I'm gonna leave it about there. And then obviously you need an ND filter to adjust the exposure. Press info, and then stop your aperture down, or just put an ND filter in front. So you can see three frames per second, one sixth of a shutter, and we're getting time-lapse recording right now. Now here's the cool thing, that's 4K time-lapse. If you want 5K raw time-lapse, just enable set 25 FPS, and then increase the resolution all the way to 5K raw. And with the 5K, you can't really see your live view, so you need to press the info button, and then you can see your 5K raw time lapse. So that's pretty much it, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of this video. Uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll surely see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.